Hello, welcome back. This video is talking about garnishments. And I'm not sure if all of you are aware that there's different type of garnishments. There are wage garnishments and there are garnishment of property other than wages. And the one we're going to talk about today is the right of garnishment other of property, excuse me, other than wages. And the reason why we're talking about that is because if you are an independent contractor, if you are self-employed or a gig worker, a hundred percent of your income can be garnished illegally. And I'm saying illegally because of how, how it is implemented. So let me say this. If you, for instance, um, a right of garnishment other than property tend to go to places like banks or someone holding um, some property for you and a bank is considered holding property. However, for instance, if you are just say a, a, um, a um, Uber driver or ride share driver with Lyft or anything like that, the, the, interest, the interesting thing is, is this, they can send right of garnishment of property other than wages to that particular contractor that you're supposed to have a contract with. And it's still, let me say this too, because there's still an issue of our share, ride share drivers actually employees or are they considered independent contractors? There's a case that has been going on in California. Um, and so far, the gig workers, drivers, ride share drivers have been prevailing to be considered employees. But Let's go back into this situation with this garnishment, right of garnishment of property other than wages. What happens is they will send something to, if the, if that creditor or whoever you owe money to finds that, excuse me, okay, well, you work here. You work for the, you, you, you got a contract with these people to do work. Just say, even if you have a contract with the government and they find out this person finds out or this person that got this judgment against you find out that, hey, this, this person got a contract with the state or with the federal government. They can actually send a file a right of garnishment other than prop, uh, of property other than wages with the court. Once they file it with the court and it's approved, then that document will be sent to the state, the federal, um, Lyft, Uber, or whoever you have this contract with. At that point, um, those individuals are considered the garnishee and they have to submit to the courts to say whether you have assets with them or not and whether they are, will co collect from you or not. The problem with the garnish, right of garnishment other than property, a property other than wages is, for instance, my case, I literally went 48 weeks of working um, as a ride share driver with Lyft and didn't make, didn't receive one penny of my income for 48 weeks straight weeks and it would have been longer if a truck didn't hit me and because with um lift platform if you get into any accident whether it's your fault or not you automatically remove from the platform so with the way it's set up is that they sent it over to lift lift filled it out and said oh well there is no as you can see here there is no assets however they also sent a separate letter that says we're gonna submit um, we, we're going to remit, excuse me, we're going to apply this wage garnishment and, some, and remit 100% of the earnings from her, which myself, once they come in. The court ruled in the fair, I felt I filed six motions, two appeals, the whole nine, like, wait a minute, this is not even constitutional for 100% of somebody's, all of somebody's earnings to be taken. And the fact that the thought, if I would have had children, I would have lost my children because I had no way to support myself and my children. And so I would have lost custody of my own kids because for one, it was a legal judgment that was gained because it was consent. As I explained to another video, what consent judgments are, I wasn't able to have it reviewed. I'm still now going to the special court of appeals, which is going to be a very interesting thing because I did find out that some consent judgment, a few, not many, have been reviewed when they when I was told by a judge that none of them are ever reviewed. But nonetheless, with a with a um, right of garnishment over the property, what happens is once they submit it while you're working, every time that they supposed to release money to you, it does not going to go to you. It's going to go to the person who filed the garnishment against you. So that means you're gonna be working and not receiving one penny. And the interesting part was, in my case, 
list, listed it as a wage garnishment, but that wasn't what was filed um, against me. And a wage garnishment is around 25% of your income and or um, somewhat similar depending on your, your state. So what happens is Lyft said, oh, we're going to go ahead and garnish this and as a wage garnishment. The court accepted that, which is a whole thing in this case. That's why the appeal is getting ready to go forth. But nonetheless, just know that the way the court is set up, the way that right of garnishment is set up, the way these judge, judges handle these situations. See, I know with me, I'm blackballed in a lot of arenas because of cases that I've passed, um, judges that I stood up to, um, and filings that I even made on corrupt judges and biased judges that I know that a lot of my stuff got pushed to the side, got denied, got denied because of that reasoning and not because of actually what the law is stating. So again, just know that when you have a judgment against you, if you are a ride, a, like I said, gig worker, independent contractor, ride share worker, etc., a hundred percent of your earnings per week can be garnished until that debt is paid off. But what I am doing now with the Special Court of Appeals is moving in a way to make sure that that law dealing with consent judgments, dealing with statute of limitations, and even right of government of property other than wages um, be honored in the manner that it's supposed to be in. Because there's no way that somebody should be remitting 100% of anybody's income week after week after week. That means even if you get another job and they find out about your other job, it's, it keeps going until that debt is paid off. So if you are a person who doesn't have a nine to five and you've been successful as an independent um, contractor or independent business owner, 100% of your income can be garnished week after week after week. So please look down in the description section. Um, Look at our petition that we have that we just started. This is our second petition. Well, this is the second petition that I've been involved with, but the first one for Pearls for Community Empowerment um, have been involved with. And please also, if you can, donate to the GoFundMe because these things that we're filing, a lot of things, majority of things that we do is out of pocket. Sometimes we might get donation of ink, paper from time to time, but because we're not um, set up in another building or in a building yet, you know, we don't really take donations in that manner because we don't have the overhead. So we, like I said, again, everything that we do comes out of our own pocket. Nobody else is ours. So this time, because of the severity of it and the need of it, we are asking that we wish you would contribute to the case that I'm personally filing um, with the Court of Special Appeals here in Maryland. Because as my case did in 2015 with the definition of rent, that case has been used the state to state to state to state to state. You can Google it, Felicia um, Lockett versus Blue Ocean Realty. LLC, and you will see um, online that that case has been used over and over again as an example to change laws in other states. And this is what we're trying to do here again. But again, this time we are literally asking for your support uh, with the petition and your support with the GoFundMe. So please, um, if you can, pass this video along so other people can understand, you know, what about this garnishment. In other videos that we have, please share them. It is very important for all of us to kind of, not kind of, but understand the laws and how they work in order to protect ourselves. So again, thank you for tuning in. And we're going to great go into the next video. And the next video is dealing with, um, is it error or corruption? So, and that's dealing with um, biasness and favoritism of landlords and their attorneys over the renter, you know, even if the renter files first. So we want to show y'all a little bit how these things work so you know what to look out for. So again, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.